If there's any French restaurants out there who want some snails, I've got loads. You can have them for free. Can you just imagine it? It would be insane. It's only a matter of life and death, you know, and that is quite trivial. Good morning everyone, welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma, this is my allotment plot in South London and these are my allotment diaries. Um, if you're new to my channel, I would love you to hit the subscribe button um, and come and follow my journey along as I try and grow my own food on my allotment plot in South London. This is my fifth year, but it's my first year on my new allotment plot, which is just over there and that's the plot that I've been working on and bringing back to life ready for the spring and now of course it is spring so it's ready to start planting on absolutely beautiful day here today in South London the sun is out I think it's going to be like 18 degrees today and it just feels amazing it's also so quiet except for the birds which is just lovely um, I think Einstein is waiting for me to feed him so let's get on with that first quickly otherwise he won't leave me alone he just keeps pestering me <laughs> So the other day when I was here I planted out my brassica plants um, and let's see if they're still alive. By the way a lot of you saying is it a little bit early to plant out brassicas? I actually don't think so but this netting that I've used here actually protects against frost as well so it will stop frost from forming on the surface and I don't think I just think they'll be okay with that. So this is insecto net that I was saying so not only does it keep out all the bugs like the, the butterflies the aphids stuff like that it also keeps off the frost as well so it's a bit like um a little covering a duvet cover moment of truth um yeah all still alive i think yeah is anything eating any of it though that's the question isn't it it looks a bit dodge over there no i think it's okay i think they've all survived the night excellent obviously newly planted plants <laughs> and seedlings and stuff they're the most vulnerable when they're really small and their roots haven't like grown down yet as soon as they kind of get going and they get bigger they can handle a little bit of slug and snail sort of damage but when they're really little it just wipe them out it's like a nuclear attack basically so we just got to keep them alive until they become really established and start actively growing big oh there he is you are here i wondered where you were yeah, because I fed you, and then you weren't there. <laughs> I love the way he just knocks them all off. <laughs> Broad beans are still alive, which is excellent news. They seem to be getting bigger as well now that I've taken the cover off of them. They've got this netting on to stop the birds, but you can see that they're kind of like starting to shoot up a bit now towards the sky. So they, they're quite happy to have their freedom. both the plots are just looking really nice now just really good I don't know I just feel really really sort of happy with how it's all come together really starting to see the benefits now and feel the benefits of all the hard work I put in over like the autumn winter time all those times I traipsed down here in the wind and the, the cold and the mud and the rain it's really starting to pay off so this is good right today because it's such a beautiful day what I wanted to do was get some more seeds in the ground so the first thing I'm going to do is do my salad bed and get all that planted up um, and then I'm going to cover it with a cloche because the temperature next week is going to drop so we do need to be careful and we do need to think about covering things as we go let's not get carried away guys <laughs> it is still March you know <laughs> I always like to have a salad bed, my allotment plot, because um, it's kind of like a pick and pick and come again bed. You know, just once it gets going, you can just go over and just pick some salad leaves and stuff. It's just great. It's just great to have. So, brought a few things for it today. Oh, I brought quite a lot of things for it actually. Going into the salad bed is going to be some radish. These are the sparklers. I have to hold it upside down because I opened it upside down. But I'm um, so radishes going in. They'll do fine. 
Then we've got some lettuce. We've got this one, which is the sul sulfita. I don't know, they're just red, red lettuce. Um, we've also got the, no, that's empty. Got some salad onions or spring onions as I like to call them. Um, they come up no problem at all really. And then I'm also going to stick in calendula into that bed as well because obviously calendula is not only a flower which is really beautiful and great for pollinators, it's also edible um, and you can put that in salads and stuff so I'm planting two different types. This one is the porcupine, see it looks a bit porcupine-ish and this one is the calendula nova which I think is the pretty classic calendula plant so we've got some calendula going in as well so let's go and sort out the salad bed. It feels very springy to be um, sowing salads, you know? So this is the chosen bed for the salad crops. I did top it up a bit recently, but um, the soil level's quite low, but I think sh um, salad crops tend to have quite shallow roots. So I think it'd do okay in here. I've got rhubarb over here somewhere. I think I've got two, I've got one there and one there. I don't know what they're doing, but we'll steer clear. So it's just this side that we'll be planting into. salad crops are in the little salad bed is all planted up so we've got the calendula radish spring onions um, lettuce all in this bed should come up really nicely actually I think it will be a good bed here actually um, right let's move on to the next job So a couple of weeks ago the team at Sarah Raven got in touch with me and they sent me um, one of their dahlia collections that you can get um, just to plant in my garden and try out. I really want to put them in my flower bed but now I've got down here I've just realised a lot of the cornflowers that I sowed are actually starting to come up which is a really great thing but I, I'm not sure I really want to plant over them now. I'm a little bit worried. I mean does anybody else sow seeds and then genuinely not expect them to do anything at all but look they're all coming up all of them and they're coming up all over the bed which is absolutely excellent it's exactly what I wanted I could probably put one in over here because I don't think I scattered any seeds over here but I really don't want to disturb this bed now I really just want to leave it as is and just have all the all the cornflowers coming up okay. what's going on Birds just have this completely hidden life that we know nothing about and we shouldn't know anything about. Isn't it weird how they just live right above us and we just have no idea what that argument was about, you know? We'll never know. We'll never know. Yeah, and now I'm thinking, where can I put the dahlias? I really want dahlias. I love them. I'm thinking this bed behind me here, but it hasn't been mulched over or anything, but maybe it'll just be all right. I might just wax them in there but I think I'm going to put one in over here because I definitely don't have any flowers coming up here. I only got, only got like a few little cornflowers germinating there but not really any behind so I think I left that bit didn't I? I think I scattered them over here. Yeah okay cool. I don't think they're going to come with a picture but I think they are, oh that's the horse manure or maybe I should go and get some horse manure for it. Um, I think it's the red collection so all the red dahlias. Dahlias here. 
Oh gosh, they've sent me loads. Oh, they've sent me absolutely loads. Some of them are massive as well. I mean, it's so good, I'm so happy, but where do I plant them? Right, so that's one dahlia in. I've got about five more. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna whack it in this bed here as is. I'm just gonna do it. On my first ever year of the allotment plot, I kid you not, I just put dahlias into ground like that because I didn't know what I was doing. And I had the most incredible dahlias I think I've ever grown in my life. And I've never managed to replicate it since. So I reckon if I just weed this out a bit, whack in the dahlias, like what's the worst that can happen you're only toying with the death of a plant it's only a matter of life and death you know and that is quite trivial in the grand scheme of things so the worst that can happen is that they don't grow and they die and that's it that's it the best thing that can happen is that they grow and i have daily a city down here just to waltz through i mean oh can you just imagine me waltzing past a sea of dahlias i mean i mean just imagine now all down there all down here dahlias right up to like I mean, can you just imagine it? It would be insane. It'd be insane. So on that basis, we're going to whack them all in. Just in case you don't know, when you plant a dahlia, right, it looks a bit like an octopus, doesn't it? It's weird. These are the tubers, these big fat bulb things, and this little stump thing on the top is what goes up. That's where the foliage sort of goes from, well not from, but it goes up that way. So when you put it in the ground, it goes that way. Like, hang on, it's a bit deep, that hole. You put it in that way like that, right? And then you cover it over but normally you leave the stump out. I'm not going to do it on that one because I put the thing in too bleeding deep. Um, you can see it on this one here, hang on. You see I've left a little stump sticking out. That's what you're supposed to do. I mean, to be fair, the stump was a bit small on this one. Where's it gone? Where did I just plant that? <laughs> Once it's under the ground, it's gone. I reckon it'll still grow though, so we'll just leave it like that. Right, I'll try and show you again with this one. This, this one might go better, this one, hang on. Right, let's see if we have more luck with this one. So this one here, this is massive, this one. There's all the tubers all around it. A lot of people separate these and grow more, but I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna put it in as one. See that bit there, that's the, that's the stalky stemmy bit. That goes up, all right, so just find that. Locate this bit, the stalky stemmy bit, <laughs> and ignore the tuber bulbs. They go under the ground, so it goes like that. All right, okay, like that. Then cover it. That. cover it with dirt basically these things these wanna you can't go up you need to go under you can tell it what to do because you're in charge right and then you see that little stem bit i'm just going to leave him poking out like that right that one's already starting to sprout so i've got high hopes for him okay i don't know why i'm hitting him now i'm sorry mate that was way too aggressive and then we just give it a water I'm not totally happy with the way that's forming a puddle. That means that my soil isn't very good. It means that the structure of the soil isn't very good because look, it's too sticky. We want it to be a bit more crumbly than that so that it can drain water better. So it just needs a big top up of compost, manure, stuff like that. So I can do that. We'll just do it the other way around in this bed. We'll plant everything into it and then we'll make the soil good after. We'll just see what happens. I did that on my first year, like I said, and it all grew. Right, okay, let's get, I think I've got one more. Yeah, 
they're in the ground. Will they grow? We don't know. I'll tell you what they won't do though. They won't sit in a bag. <laughs> so at least they're in the dirt. I mean, if they're in the dirt, there's a chance they could grow. If they're in a bag, I mean, to be fair, they were actually growing in the bag. So I don't think that's a very good analogy because a lot of my plants do just grow in bags. Um, they actually seem happier in bags, to be honest. Maybe I should just leave them in future. Just let them grow in a plastic, in a paper bag. Plant the whole bag out. Just chuck the bag, just chuck it. Oh, what am I saying? Right, God, there's such big birds here today. Sorry, I'm getting scatty because I'm tired. Right, that's dahlias in, that's cornflowers, that's salads, great. I'm trying to tidy up as I go because I'm a very messy gardener. I just leave my stuff everywhere and then I just lose it all, I lose it all. And everyone gets very frustrated with me. But yeah. Just a little purple broccoli update because you know we had the issue um the issue is now continuing it's ongoing and everything that we did to try and stop these from being eaten has failed uh as you can see snails have taken over it now i never normally have a problem with snails snails are normally all right i think they're okay it's the slugs i normally hate but in this case it's snails the snails have decided to move in it's you know snail real estate is going up and um this is where they've decided to move in so it wasn't the pigeons, it was the blooming snails. What do you have to say for yourself, guys? I think perhaps the net was actually a bad idea because the birds might like the snail. I don't know if birds eat snails, but if they did, they can't with the net on it. So let's unnet them and raise havoc on the snails. Gosh, loads of snails here. This is literally snail real estate. This is insane. Snail town. Oh, look, snails in the net. Where's Einstein gone? I want to see if he eats a snail. I think birds do eat snails. I wonder if they're a bit of a delicacy for, bird, for birds, the same as they're a delicacy for humans. I wouldn't eat a snail. If I was like trying to harvest snails though, this is great. This would be great for a, a snail harvest. If there's any French restaurants out there who want some snails, I've got loads. You can have them for free. But yeah, no purple sprouting broccoli, I'm afraid, this year, even though I grew it for like, what was it? 10 months, 11 months, 11 months. 11 months these guys honestly never had a problem with them before now i do <laughs> i don't know if he'll eat it but i'm gonna put you up here and see if he eats you well i hope you enjoyed the vlog today sun seems to be going in now we only actually got a couple of hours of it but um seems to have all clouded over hopefully it comes back out again soon but it was nice while it lasted right <laughs> that's about what we get in March here in the UK um but yeah it was, it's been nice actually just to potter around I've actually been here for a whole hour longer than I normally am and I think it's just down to the weather uh, just being so nice and just wanting me to stay you know I realize how much I've been trying to get away from it during like the rain and the cold but yeah it's nice just to potter around I hope you enjoyed the vlog today if you did do subscribe and I will see you again next time thank you for watching bye